By the end of this video, you should be able to create REST API in Apex. Assuming that you are already familiar with REST, I'll spend the majority of this tutorial on how to create REST APIs in Apex versus what a REST API is. If you are not familiar with it yet, pause here and check out Lexi's tutorial on REST APIs before continuing. Otherwise, let's get started. Hi, I'm Simon, and I'm a developer from SmoothStack. In the context of Salesforce, REST APIs play a crucial role in enabling developers to interact with and extend the Salesforce platform. Salesforce provides a robust set of REST APIs that allow you to access, manipulate, and integrate data and functionality from Salesforce in a secure and standard manner. Okay, enough talking, I'll go ahead and share my screen in a second and show you an example of REST API in Apex. Feel free to follow along. All right, this is the Apex class that we will be exposing as a REST service. We called it my first REST endpoint. And first things first, we have annotated it with the REST resource annotation. This is what makes all of the magic happen to allow you to expose this Apex class as a REST service. The URL mapping variable that we pass in specifies the path that the Apex REST service should be accessed from. So we will be adding slash my contact endpoint slash to the URL. And then the asterisk is up to the service making the call to specify. So in our case, we'll be using it for the external ID of the Salesforce record in the get and delete requests. Next, it's important to specify global rather than public because otherwise we wouldn't be able to access this class from any external sites. And we use with sharing to make sure that all of our sharing rules and other permissions are enforced for any calls from this class. All right, so we have five different methods, one for get, one for post, one for patch, put, and finally one for delete. Each of these annotations allows you to expose the method as a REST service for that operation and so starting off with get, we need to describe the method as global as well, because otherwise we would not be able to access it from any external services. Uh, we declare it as static because we don't want to instantiate it. And then of course we'll be returning a contact from this method. So the first thing that we do is we set the rest request so that we can get the request URI and set the external ID as the substring of that request URI. So that's going to be everything in this URL. And we want everything after the first slash, or rather the last slash. So given that they input the external ID after the slash, we will be able to pass that into the SOQL query and get the record based on the external ID and then return it with the ID, the name, and the email. Next, we've also set up a post method. Uh, again, we need the method to be global. And in this method, instead of specifying the data in the URL, we're going to take in a contact in the form of JSON in the body. And then we're going to insert that contact. The update 
and upsert methods work similarly, but in this case, since we're using the external ID, we will take that in as part of the JSON, and then we will query for the contact that matches that external ID, and then update the email based on the JSON input, and then update the contact to update. The put method is for absertion, and it will follow the same basic pattern as the post and the patch methods. But here, we're going to query for the contact as a list, so that then, if nothing gets returned from the external ID, we can insert it. And so we know that if we don't get any records from this query, then we don't have anything that matches the external ID and we'll need to insert the contact. If we do have a record that matches the external ID, then we want to update the submitted contact. And again, we'll be updating the email of that contact. And then finally, we have an annotation for HTTP delete. And when we use that annotation, then we can call this delete contact method, which follows the same basic structure as the get method, where we set the rest request as rec, and then use it for the request URI to get the external ID from the end of the URI, and then we query for the contact and delete it. So now that we have gone over all of these methods, let's do a quick test to verify that they work as expected. So for starters, we'll go ahead and use the getContact method, and we will pass in an external ID and see if it returns a contact for us. So in order to do so, we will first navigate to Salesforce and we will open our contacts and we will go ahead and click on our test user and then get an external ID so that we know what we're working with. And we will also go ahead and open setup. And I'm going to show you the user that we'll be authenticating with. We'll be opening Workbench and logging in as this API user. I set up this user because it's important to test your integrations with the user that you're expecting to be accessing the service that you've exposed as a REST service. Otherwise, you couldn't be sure that they would have access to everything required, uh, for example, the Apex classes or the records. And so it streamlines the testing when you use a specific user that will have the same permissions as the end users for your integration. All right, so I'm opening an incognito window and opening Workbench in that incognito window so that we can sign in as a separate user. We will agree to these terms of service. And then I have created this test API user, which I showed you just a moment ago. We will log in as them. This is Workbench, which we will be using for the REST Explorer, and it will allow us to access the Apex class that we exposed as a REST API. And so we're starting with get, and we need to do slash apex rest slash and then the ID 
of the record that we want to get. And so when we click execute, oh, we're seeing service not found. Uh, the reason we're seeing this error is because we didn't actually include the slash my contact endpoint, which is a critical part of our URL mapping. So let's go ahead and add that and then hit execute again. And we can see that we got the ID, the name, and the email of the test user, or rather the uh, test contact that we were expecting to see. So moving forward, let's go ahead and test the the patch and we will update the user that we just got. So when we perform a patch, we no longer need the external ID in the URL and in the request body, we will need to type up the JSON that we're going to be performing the request with. So here we're always going to open with a bracket and then because we named the variable submitted contact in our Apex class, we'll need to put submitted contact in quotations here as the variable in our JSON. And then we want to start listing off all of the fields in the contact that we're going to be updating. And uh, we need to add the external ID because we're using that to query for the contact. So we'll start with external ID. Let's go ahead and grab the external ID from Salesforce to make sure that we get it right. And it was 987654. Then we need the email because the method is supposed to update the email and we will update it to test0 at test.com.invalid. All right, and because email is the only field that we're setting and the external ID is the only field that we are using to query, this should be sufficient for patching. All right, here we got a JSON parser error, and it's saying, was expecting a comma to separate object entries. So the issue here, of course, is we forgot to add a comma to separate the two fields. So we're going to do that now and hit execute. And we got a successful response. Now let's verify in Salesforce that the email was updated as expected. And upon refreshing, we can see that the email is now test0 at test.com.invalid. So we have verified that we can get and patch. Let's go ahead and test deletion real quick. Uh, Posting and putting would be very similar to patching, but uh, of course with posting we're just going to be creating and with putting we will have the opportunity to upsert. But moving on to deletion, we'll go ahead and enter the external ID and execute. 
we got the same successful response. So let's go ahead and navigate back. And it says, looks like there's a problem. The reason for that is that the record no longer exists, but one way that we can verify to be extra sure is to query for that record within our org. So we will select ID from contact where external ID is equal to the external ID of our contact. And when we perform that query, we get zero rows. So we can be sure that our contact was successfully deleted. All right, that's all for the overview. I showed you how to use the rest resource annotation coupled with the get, post, patch, and put and delete annotations to expose an Apex class as a REST service. And I showed you how to smoke test those methods using the workbench. If you're curious about testing the other two methods, then I encourage you to build the class in your own development org and test them on your own. In this tutorial, we learned how to create REST APIs in Salesforce. If you would like me to cover any specific Salesforce topic, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other videos by me and my colleagues. See you next time.